is because uh, the the applied an the anatomy of the anterior column that is so peculiar. So we need to understand this anatomy, and that's why the it's been kept as a separate talk because uh, you need to analyze how the elevatorial fascia will be handled uh, in each of the approaches that will be discussed uh, later on. <coughs> So there are two important structures that you need to be wary of in anterior approach, that is the corona mortis and ilopetal fascia. Just a quick word about corona mortis, uh, uh, that is the, the anastomosis between the obturator and the external iliac vessels. There are multiple variations of it. It passes perpendicular, crosses perpendicular to the superior pubic ramus like that, around five, four to five centimeter uh, lateral to the pubic symphysis. Or though, uh, however, its uh, position may be variable. Just like that, there can be anomalous origins or there can be multiple coronas like this. So that you need to be wary of. <coughs> Let's come down to the iliopectinal fascia. So understanding of all anterior approaches revolves around the understanding of the anatomy of the iliopectinal fascia. So this is what the pelvis is going to look if you see the pelvis like this. If you see the pelvis like this, so this is the pubic ramus, this is the sacrum, these are the pelvic contents and these are the walls of the pelvis like that. Okay, so you see, and then you see all these facial reflections. Okay, so let's focus on one side to be, be more, uh, to, to avoid confusion. Now this is the, uh, the uh, pu pubis, this is the posterior aspect of the pubis because we are seeing, seeing like this, okay. So uh, that's the pectineal brim and that comes continuous like this onto the sacrum like that. So we can see that this is a sovas muscle. So sovas comes like this from the L5 root and then it merges with the iliacus and goes like that. <coughs> so that's the psoas muscle. This, uh, as we know, that every muscle has an investing fascia. So this psoas and the iliacus are the investing fascia as well. So that is called as the iliacus fascia. So this investing fascia of the psoas and iliacus is called iliacus fascia. And it, it, when it goes anteriorly, uh, we term it as the iliopectinal fascia. And why we do that? We'll come to that in a later, uh, in a minute. So. On, on the medial side of this investing fascia, we have these vessels. Those they are the vessels. Okay. Then the vessels generally lie on the more or less on the brim, if you say, see I, uh, the iliopectinal brim. On the lateral side is the psoas, and the inner side is the true pelvis. So if you can see that this iliacus fascia is going to be a uh, a curtain in between the false pelvis and the true pelvis. So it is going to be a, a, a sheet of um, fascia like that. So in it is going to be divide your false pelvis from the true pelvis. So from the if you are assessing from the false pelvis, you cannot reach the true pelvis. If you are reaching from the true pelvis, you cannot go into the false pelvis without uh, actually uh, <coughs> seeing or encountering this kind of the fascia. That's how what is that? That is what is the cadaveric dissection. You can see that the iliacus, that the psoas, that the iliac crest, and this is the investing fascia of the iliacus. So this fascia, if you see. <coughs> it is very thin in the posterior aspect. In the posterior aspect, it is very thin. The moment it starts coming anterior, it starts becoming thicker and thicker. Okay. The fascia attaches medially to the iliopectinal brim till the midpoint. Laterally, it is attached on the iliac crest like that. Anteriorly, it continues onto the inguinal ligament where it, uh, you know, uh, the iliacus will exit, and from here it will form an arch like this. So that's the anterior extension. So it will form an arch like this. It will form this two, uh, you know, this kind of the um, uh, space uh, from, from which the iliopsoas will go. And this arch is very tight structure and that's what's called as the iliopectineal arch, okay. Uh, so if we see again next diagram, <coughs> this depicts it very beautifully. So that's the psoas and we know that this, the muscle is in, inside the investing fascia of the psoas, so that's why it will lie within the, ili uh, the iliacus fascia. And this uh, facial band, that is the anterior extension of the iliopectinal fascia, which will run from the inguinal ligament onto the um, um, iliopubic eminence. And this structure is very bad, uh, very tight, and it will not prevent, it will prevent you from going on either side uh, of the uh, pubis. So this is very beautifully depicted in this kind of a, a diagram gotten from the old textbook. <laughs> Another kind of variation that you need to see that, th so this is the psoas, this is the iliacus. Sometimes we have psoas minor muscle. This psoas minor muscle will come like this and will insert exactly at the point uh, where this arch lies. 
and when this psoas muscle minor muscle exists this iliopectinal fascia will become extremely tight okay it will just not budge so this facial extension of the psoas minor muscle will make iliopectinal fascia again very much tight structure <coughs> this is what we try to recreate if we you know if i had to recreate on a model so this is will be the uh, the uh, ex uh, the extent of the iliopectinal fascia so that will be ilingual ligament that that's micropore is iliopectinal fascia you can see that medial is attached it is continuous with the periosteum of the quadrilateral plate like that if you trace it medially it will be continuous with the cooper's ligament so the cooper's ligament is the uh, posterior superior condensation of the periosteum of the superior pubic ramus is a very tough structure uh, and it will continuous medial like this and if you see these are iliopectinal eminence here if, if if you have a model you can appreciate that these are oblique ridge on that like that this ridge is oblique so this iliopectinal fascia attachment will go obliquely like that so it is not it so it has a y shape attachment one one limb goes obliquely anteriorly and medially it will be continuous with the cooper's ligament what will lie here is the pectineus muscle so the pectineus muscle will take origin from it and there will be a pectineal fascia onto <coughs> the pectineus muscle which will be again confluencing with this kind of fascia <laughs> so this video will demonstrate the iliopectinal fascia attachment <coughs> so what we see here in the plastic green is iliopectinal fascia this is the um, the psoas muscle what we see in yellow is the femoral nerve so this uh, is the uh, investing fascia of the iliacus posterior is very thin it forms opening from which the psoas will enter on the lateral side it will attach to the iliacus crest it is here it is very thin then me medially uh, it will attach al along the iliopectinal brim and obliquely across the iliopectinal eminence like that obliquely <coughs> and this is very important because if you are going to do a stopa approach and if you cut only like this and don't cut it like this then you cannot retract the iliopectinal fascia it will become extremely tough uh, uh, to cut it so that's why uh, when you are doing the uh stopa we need to cut so this is the pectineus muscle if which you see this is the origin of pectineus muscle there will be investing fascia like that and that will be continuous there again so if you are doing a subinguinal approach you will uh, encounter this kind of the pectineal fascia first before you go into the iliopectinal fascia <coughs> if you are going uh, from the lateral approach you will go you will you will go submuscularly below the psoas and then you will so now these are the vessels <laughs> they will lie on to the iliopectinal fascia like that <coughs> yeah so you can see that the neurovascular attachment uh, the relationship the vein artery now the nerve is inside the fascia on that side so that is how we, in the stopa which we are going to do in the aip approach we retract the vessels like that we cut the iliopectinal fascia here and then we retract our retractor goes below the psoas and then that's how it the, along the psoas and vessels are retracted this is how we are going to see in the pararectus approach we are going to be directly like that so we are going to cut it like this okay <coughs> this is how it's going to be seen through the ilio femur or lateral kind of approaches that we are going to cut this we are going to osteotomize this we are going to take everything out we are going to go below the uh, the psoas muscle and then through the psoas we are going to take uh, we going below the ilio psoas we are going to Uh, detach the medial attachment of the iliopectinal fascia and then we can take our periosteum and try to slowly swipe off this tough attachment that is on the iliopectinal eminence so this is about uh, the iliopectinal fascia and how we are going to approach and assess this fascia uh, through the different approaches <coughs> same here that again this will be the projection where we are going to see it through the ilioinguinal approach so take home message uh, if you are contemplating an anti approach a different kind of anti approach maybe think about how we are going to assess and how we are going to cut iliopectinal fascia in that that particular fracture pattern uh, corona mortis exists in every case uh, they, it may be very small it may be uh, very large but in almost every case uh, corona mortis ex exists uh, be aware of it thank you